they're not in properly because the light, the light hasn't come on. It's a really awkward thing, this one. It's not on there. We gathered here this morning because of our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and communion with the Holy Spirit be with you always. Good morning to everybody. A warm welcome also to all those who have joined us via YouTube, home, and who are seriously ill in hospital. As always, we pause for a moment at the beginning of Mass and we think of those we wish to pray for during this Eucharist. We remember especially those who are sick and housebound. We remember in a special way Anne-Marie Taylor who recently died. And we know things are difficult just now. Uh, a lot of families are struggling. Um, but uh, when we think about it, we don't really uh, understand what real poverty is about. And that's why I always in the last Sunday in September, uh, we invite Mary's Meals to come along and John is here today to share with us on behalf of Mary's Meals about the, the work they are doing. So we remember very much those who work for Mary's Meals and especially those uh, who they work for. We remember them in our Mass. Um, in today's Gospel, Jesus tells the story where he's not even saying that we are our brother's keeper, but he tells us we are our brother's brother. Um, he's not saying... Um, we will be judged on how often we pray or how often we go to church. But he does say that one of the criteria that we will be judged on is what is our attitude to the poor. So as we begin this Eucharist, we want to celebrate well. We recognize that uh, we are often blind to our own faults and blind to the needs of others. So we ask the Lord to forgive us and to open our eyes. Lord Jesus, for the times we choose not to see poverty, Lord, have mercy. For the times we are good at helping the poor, but show little interest in fighting the causes of poverty, Christ, have mercy. And for the times we want our faith to have nothing to do with other people, Lord, have mercy. Lord, take away our sins and open our eyes to compassion and love and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God together. Glory to God in the highest, and the earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Our generous and loving God, your Son Jesus is risen from the dead and tells us to see the needs of the poor and to give them food and drink. In them may we recognize your Son and love him and care for him. You have filled us with good things. Make us poor of heart, that we may understand the poor, generous enough not to measure our gifts, and grateful for all you have given us by bringing joy and liberation to the needy. We ask this in the name 
of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Let's now sit down as we listen to God's word. A reading from the prophet Amos. The Almighty Lord says this, Woe to those ensconed so snugly in Zion, and to those who feel so safe on the mountain of Samaria. Lying on ivory beds and sprawling on their divans, they dine on lambs from the flock and stall fattened veal. They bawl to the sound of the harp. They invent new instruments of music like David. They drink wine by the bowlful and use the finest of oil for anointing themselves. But about the ruin of Joseph, they do not care at all. That is why they will be the first to be exiled. The sprawler's re revelry is over. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, my soul give praise to the Lord. My soul gives praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My, My soul, soul gives, gives praise, praise to the Lord. Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. My, My soul, soul gives praise, praise to the Lord. Lord. He upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. My soul, My soul gives praise to the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As a man dedicated to God, you must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patient and gentle. Fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you were made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. Now, before God, the source of all life, and before Jesus Christ, who spoke up as a witness for the truth in front of Pontius Pilate, I put you the duty of doing all that you have been told, with no faults or failures, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God, the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of kin kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is in inaccessible light, whom no man has seen and no man is able to see. To him be honour and everlasting power. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he has been comforted here, while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to,
crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers, to give them warning, so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. I know Father Abraham, said the rich man, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I said at the beginning of Mass, John has come from the Lithgow to share with us today about Mary's meals. Thank you, Father, and thank you for inviting me to talk to you about Mary's Meals. I know you have supported Mary's Meals over the years, and thank you very much for that. Unfortunately, backpacks are no more, costing too much to send them, and the priority becomes feeding more children. You may know some of what I say, but hopefully I will preach other things too. Mary's Meals started in 2002, when there was a drought in Malawi. Magnus McFarlane Barrow had founded a charity called Sir Scottish International Relief from his home in Dalmally in Argyll, and he went to Malawi to see what he could do to help. He was introduced to a widow called Emma and her six children. She was dying of AIDS and was worried about what was going to happen to her children when she died. There are around a million orphans in Malawi. The eldest boy, Edward, who was 14, told Magnus he wanted to have enough food to eat to be able to go to school one day. He was the inspiration for Mary's meals. Edward knew that he needed an education if he was to break out of the cycle of poverty, but how could he go to school when he had to feed his family? He had responsibilities we shouldn't ask of any child. The idea of Mary's meals is very simple. Feed a child at school every day, and they will not only have that nourishing food, but also the chance of an education. In 2002, Magnus arranged to feed 200 children in school in Malawi. Now we feed two and a quarter million children every day in 20 countries. Many families in Madagascar used to depend on fishing, but fish are now scarce in their area due to global warming. People scratch a living from farming small plots of land really too small to feed a family. Cyclones, floods and droughts are common and have washed away many schools and villages already this year. Feeding started in 2018 and we're now feeding in 300 schools. Half the children are chronically undernourished. There is severe poverty in arid areas in northern Kenya the Takana people who, lo- who live there used to be semi-nomadic, moving from waterhole to waterhole with their camels and cattle. Now the animals have died because of prolonged drought. People have drifted to towns where their children might have an education and hope for the future. We work with the Diocese of Lodwa to feed children in nursery schools. Another charity fed the older children, but their project ended. Hungry children saw smoke from the fires, cooking the food for their younger siblings, and went to see if there was any left for them. The under sixes were often taking food home to feed their brothers and sisters. We now feed all these children, about 136,000 children in all in this area. Magnus went to Tigray in northern Ethiopia in 2017, just before we started feeding there. He arrived at one school at midday. The children came out into the playground, but there was no lunch and no play. Everyone was too tired. One boy called Dawit told him that he walked three hours to get to school. He really wanted to learn. 
Mary's meal started to make a difference to Dewitt, but sadly, that's the last good news I have of Tigre. The conflict there has reunited after a ceasefire, reignited after a ceasefire. Ethiopian, Ethiopian planes are bombing their own people. Schools are closed. Access to some areas is impossible. Lives are being cut short. Working with our local partner, we've been able to switch our programme to feed thousands of displaced families in hastily constructed refugee camps. Conflict is the norm in South Sudan too. Two nuns of New of Mary's wheels, Meals work in their work in India asked for our help when they moved to the Diocese of Rumbek in South Sudan. We feed 70,000 children there now, but we need to do so much more. Two million children in South Sudan are out of school. 15 million children in the Horn of Africa are acutely malnourished. So how do we feed all these children? In Malawi, we feed over a million children every school day. It starts with requests from local people. Most of the work will be done by volunteers, feeding their, helping feed to their own children. When an area with several schools asks for help, staff go to meetings and talk and listen to everybody. They build up a partnership. Everyone needs to understand the role that they will have and what we will do to help them. Then the community sets to work. There are 85,000 volunteers in Malawi. They get up early to gather firewood and carry water. They boil up huge pots of the food, which is called likuni pala. It's maize porridge with soya and vitamins. In hard times, this mug of porridge may be all the child gets to eat in that day. It's just enough. All the food in Malawi is locally sourced, providing income for local farmers. We managed to keep feeding most children during COVID. When schools have been closed, we provided weekly rations for parents to collect from the schools to cook at home. It costs just £15.90 to feed a child for a whole year in school. At least 93 pence in every pound donated goes to the work overseas. Magnus's office is an old corrugated iron shed in Dalmale in Argyle, where he stored good for East, goods for Eastern Europe in the early 1990s. It reminds him that many of the people we serve would be delighted to call such a humble shed their home. Mary's Meals measures the impact of all it does and can show that one simple meal really does make a huge difference. I'll leave the final word to Magnus, who after visiting East Africa said, this, it was during the summer, he said, we can use the current global disruption as a new excuse to delay our promise to the world's children, or we can hear their cry and decide that this is no better time that there is no better time than this to end this intolerable negligence of us. Please continue to keep us in our prayers. By us, I mean the volunteers in this country, the staff, and now in about 18 countries throughout the world, we have Mary's Meals groups working, and of course, the, the people who volunteer in the countries where we already provide the food and the children that they are feeding. We, next, we need money more than anything now because of the dire world situation. And we really want to carry on feeding our very large family and to feed the next hungry child. Thank you. Let's now stand and profess what we believe I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's merciful love for us, we come before him with our prayers. And our response after each intercession is, Lord, your kingdom come to all. Lord, your kingdom come to all. We pray for Pope Francis and all church leaders. May their sensitivity and compassion encourage all Christians in their witness to promote the kingdom of God amongst us, and especially those who are excluded from everything. We pray, Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to all. We pray for our politicians and all who have to make political decisions in these uncertain and challenging times. May they be guided by values of justice and human dignity. We pray. Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to all. all. We pray for the victims of the war in Ukraine, the floods in Pakistan, and the drought and famine in East Africa. May those people who have died have eternal life. May the bereaved be comforted and the traumatised be supported. We pray. Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to, to all. all. For all the schools and children, unknown by name to us, who benefit from Mary's meals. May they receive many other opportunities to grow and develop their full potential. We pray. Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to all. all. That Mary Meals may continue to work of reaching out to children, offering them the food, the possibility of education and a greater hope of living life to the full. We pray. Lord, Lord, your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to all. all. We remember those who during this pandemic continue to be seriously ill, that they may be supported by the sacrament of the sick and by the love of all our communities. We pray. Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to all. all. We pray for those who have died, free from the troubles of this world. May they enjoy everlasting peace in your presence. We pray. Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come to, all. to all. And let us for a few moments in silence, each one place before the Father, your own most personal, most intimate prayers. Father, we ask you to hear the prayers of your people as we place all our trust in you. We do this through Jesus, who is our Lord for ever and ever. So let us now sit down as we offer our own lives with the bread and wine in our offertory.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Loving Father, hear our bread and wine. By this gesture of offering, we assume our responsibility for the poor. With your Son, let us never remain indifferent to the human and, sp and spiritual misery of our brothers and sisters in need. Accept our poverty of our own heart and be our only lasting riches through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, and son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> you are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race, and who always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words of action to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and following his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. 
We remember especially our own relatives and friends who have died and all those who have recently died in all our parish communities. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Bernadette, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to the Father in that special way that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray now for the peace of the risen Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We can't shake each other's hands, but let's just turn to those close to us and acknowledge their presence with a bow or smile with our eyes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. This is Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. He invites us to share what we are and have. Blessed are we who are invited to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Those who are at home or in hospital, uh, obviously they cannot go to Holy Communion just now, but they make their spiritual communion by praying together the prayer of St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May God bless you, Father and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. So we're all going to have a blessing, are we? May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. 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 God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let us remember now those who are housebound at home, our Eucharistic ministers at the weekend, take Jesus in the Eucharist to them. Lord Jesus Christ, we have remembered your death and we have celebrated your resurrection. And just as we have satisfied our hunger and thirst with living bread, go with our Eucharistic ministers and let them share with our sick what we have received. Let them proclaim that you died and rose for them and celebrate the new life you offer. Let us pray. O 
God, Father of the poor, your son has been here among us. We have welcomed him, but it was he who gave us to eat. May we keep receiving him and making him feel comfortable as our brother every time someone begs for our help. We ask you for this sensitivity through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now, those who receive the uh, electronic version of our newsletter, I think it went out uh, late uh, last night, about five o'clock. Uh, you know, know that Peter Lamb, uh, the year I came, started looking after our website and the newsletter and reflections. Uh, Peter's now terminally ill. He's been, the last couple of months, he's been uh, doing the newsletter sitting in a hospital while he's waiting for his treatments, but uh, he's had a setback now. And during this time, he's been preparing someone to slowly take over. So now Richard uh, O'Grady uh, is taking over the newsletter uh, and, and started this week, but it was only, things kind of only happened Friday night. Um, so it was a bit of a, a rough or a very hard job to put something out. So something did go out last night and it might take a couple of weeks to adapt as we haven't had much time to prepare. Um, if Peter is able, he'll also help uh, over the next few weeks. Um, but uh, just expect a, a few ups and downs with the newsletter just now. Uh, not so serious, uh, Father Michael Carey uh, in Alawa, uh, he's done with COVID again, uh, which means we have to be a bit flexible here. Uh, luckily, um, I thought I was going to have to stand in from this weekend, but we've got a priest from uh, Dundee, but they, they have a, a big funeral tomorrow. So this afternoon and tomorrow, uh, I'll be saying the Requiem Mass. It means that tomorrow uh, there'll be no 9.30 Mass, but there will be morning office and Holy Communion. Uh, it also means that uh, I won't be able to go to St. Modern's tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, um, we go to Carfin uh, for the relics of St. Bernadette's. Uh, we're going with St. Mungo's. Uh, the bus leaves at 10 o'clock, so for all those who signed up for it, we have to be at St. Mungo's for 10 o'clock. However, we still will have Mass here because it's a YouTube Mass, uh, so the Mass on Wednesday, so for all those who are at home and watching, and normally assist uh, Mass on a Wednesday, but we're going to start at 9.20, 10 minutes earlier, so that we uh, finish Mass, uh, because I, I can't afford to miss the bus either, eh? So um, the Mass will be at 9.20. That's especially for those who watch uh, on YouTube. Um, also, straight after Mass today, um, our Lourdes uh, youth team will meet just for a, 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 few, a short time, just uh, as we hope this year to start, uh, hopefully sending a few youth to go to Lourdes to, for two weeks to uh, to work, uh, to, to look after our sick who, who go there and make the, their pilgrimage worthwhile. So we'll meet straight after Mass today. Um, the children who are candidates for First Holy Communion, First Confessions, they should have received a, a letter from uh, the school as next Sunday uh, after this Mass we'll be having a meeting. And it's the same for the candidates for confirmation. Um, they've probably received a letter already from St. Modens uh, as we, in a couple of weeks' time we start preparation for confirmation. And sorry for all the, the notices, but it's because the, the news version was very uh, uh, short last night and not, perhaps everybody didn't get it. Um, a big thanks to uh, John who came to share with us uh, about Mary's meals. It's not all about talking, it's also about action. Um, so there is uh, buckets at the exit uh, on your way out and we ask people to, to collaborate and be very generous uh, as you heard from John how, how much they work and how much they need uh, our help and I'm, I'm sure as always uh, you will be very very generous so I thank John for coming along he came last night and has been here since early this morning uh, so a big thanks for him for sharing uh, with us let's now ask for God's blessing the Lord be with you. In this Eucharistic celebration, the Lord has enriched us with his word and with the gift of himself. We are now ready to enrich one another by sharing it with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. And a very good week.
to everybody.